What's good, y'all? I know it's been a while, but we are back to making the ultimate hero guides, this time with the invisible gear rate 3 queen, Alora. Why invisible gear rate 3 queen? Because her talent states that she is invisible so long as she doesn't activate her ultimate. Alright, what we are going to do in this video is going to be again a mid game, late game, end game build and the stats required to use Alora to clear. 19, 20 and 21 of gear rate 3 so stay tuned for that and let's get straight into the skill review. So basic attack deals up to 120% damage to one enemy prioritizing airborne units so pretty basic. Extreme concentration increases crit rate by 10% if there are no allies in the adjacent tiles increases crit damage by 20 going up to 35% crit damage. So uh, unleveled you can get 10% crit rate, leveled you can get up to 15% which is already perfect. We all know that one of the most important stats on gear is crit rate and getting 15% crit rate from her passive definitely gives us some uh, freedom in building and should definitely make it easier for you to build her properly. Furthermore if there are no allies in adjacent tiles going up to 35% extra crit damage is obviously nice especially because Alora is a type of hero that is mainly on her own, so unlikely to be boosted by a Dolores or anyone like that, which means she needs sources to like empower herself and then deal damage herself because she's pretty much on her own. Alright, scattered shots during the ultimate for each crit hit landed deals 80% damage to two targets within 1.5 tiles of the initial target, so going from 60 up to 80%. And we have the ultimate. When triggered, loses the invi invisibility state and each attack changes to two strikes in a row and damage to airborne units increases by 45%. So we have a damage multiplier against airborne units from 45 going all the way up to 60% and reducing the skill cost from 1000 down to 900. Now the important part here. You see it says two, two strikes in a row. There is no extra damage multiplier on the ultimate, which means it is just going to be two basic attacks and this already gives us kind of the direction where we want to go in regards to what we want to do uh, or when we want to stop leveling so one of obviously the most important parts over here is going to be the ultimate you want the ultimate to level 4 level 4 ultimate and then at least around level 4 maybe level 5 basic attack because the damage of the ultimate is mainly based on your basic attack and then for the rest of the skills, probably extreme concentration, at least up to the extra crit rate level for ease of building, but uh, whatever you can manage and scattered shots, obviously helpful when you want to trigger the ultimate. But the most important part is ultimate to level 4 and basic attack as high as you can get. And at the end of the day, if she's still struggling, you're then going to max out all skills. Let's get into Awakens. Awakens. Her awakenings are actually quite interesting. Awakening number one, excess crit rate is converted into an equal percentage of crit damage. This means that if you build this Alora with a crit rate main stat banger and have her A1, it actually still works in your favor. So if you have an Alora A1, build her with crit rate percent main stat bangles and do make sure to then aim for at least 140% crit rate. If you're aiming for that or you're going to lose out on crit damage. A2, 300 attack is quite nice especially with uh, with the basic formula of uh, attack overcoming enemy defense. Crit, trig triggered in the invisibility, uh, crit hits triggered in the invisibility state will have a 50% to deal an additional 80% damage to two targets within 1.5 tiles of the initial target. So just the damage increase but nothing super major. The A4, 8% crit rate ease of building and with the A1 extra crit damage and then the A5 when in the invisibility state every 10 crit hits triggered will increase damage by 10% during the next ultimate stacking up to 3 times so 30% more damage honestly if there's an awakening to aim for it's going to be the A1 because the A1 is unique in itself and gives you more freedom in building which is always good and yeah A1 the rest is pretty much whatever build time mid game build we're going to again go from left to right starting on the left side we have the calamity set 
And here we have the choices between Calamity, Whirlwind and Annihilating Might. So the three usual sets. And stat wise you want to aim for attack bonus, crit rate as well as attack bonus and crit rate. So pretty much attack bonus and, and crit rate on both pieces. And you're set for the left side. Furthermore you should even in the mid game aim for a left side set. Because you only need two pieces to complete the set. And the main set is fixed onto the right side. For the right side we are running a broken set. So no set effect on the right side. Which is super and totally fine for the mid game. And the split here we're running is a triple attack percent split. So three times attack percent as the main set. And you're going to aim for at least, at least attack percent with crit rate. And then as a bonus you want crit damage or attack speed as substats. Or further on attack flat or rage region as like less important substats. And yeah. As you can see we're running triple attack percent. And now... Let's already get onto artifacts. This artifact over here, Idrit's Gaze. If you happen to have an Idrit's Gaze that you can actually give to your Alora, when you can give an Idrit's Gaze to your Alora, what you actually want to do, instead of running two times, instead of running three times attack, you're going to run two times attack and one crit damage piece. Important for this crit damage piece, it needs to have crit damage, crit rate, and attack bonus. You do want all those stats on your crit damage piece. And this is going to be your Alora in the case that you happen to have an Idris Gaze. Idris Gaze is the best choice for Alora Because she's on her own and needs some way of dealing more damage. And because we don't have a Dolores to boost her attack. We need something that ignores enemy defense to allow her to then do more damage. Which is why Idris Gaze is the premier choice. But don't worry if you don't happen to have an Idris Gaze. What you want to equip instead is going to be either Ancestral Teachings or the Insignia of the Perfection. Ancestral Teachings just being as strong as it is, giving extra attack, being flat out amazing. And then Insignia of Perfection actually comes in really nicely on an Alora because Alora is permanently invisible, allowing her to never take damage, which is why Insignia of Perfection can then actually stack up. So yeah, those are the three choices and this already concludes the mid-game build. This already brings us to late game gearing Alora. So let's again start from left to right. And uh, the usual sets we have Calamity set, Whirlwind set, Annihilating Might set, and if you already have it, obviously the Warlord set. Substat wise, we have again at least attack bonus and crit rate on both the weapon and the chest piece. And then you want to aim for attack speed on the weapon and crit damage on the chest piece. Because attack speed on a weapon is only on ancients, as well as attack speed on an armor only being ancient exclusive. This already concludes left side gear, then let's get on to the right side gear. Right side gear, we do want to aim for a set effect, and for the set effect, we have we have six we have six to choose from, which is going to be either Night Terror, Hawk Eye Set, Doom Set, Fatality Set, Fracture Set, or the Wisdom Set. I'm going to rank those somewhere over here. And let's get let's get into the sets. So Night Terror is pretty much a very easy set for her, very easy to maintain, pretty much giving her even throughout her ult or in her ult just a straight up 25% damage boost. The Hawkeye set for the Hawkeye set, you do need to make sure that you have an attack interval of let me let me check again real quick an attack interval of at least 1.2 seconds because if you don't, you're not going to get the damage increase. If it takes you longer than 6 seconds to attack 5 times. Mm, and then we have the Doom set. Doom set being a straightforward 18% damage boost. The Fatality set giving her a bit of attack. Allowing her to ignore defense slash resistance. The Fracture set giving her more crit damage. One of the bigger problems with the Fracture set is. That we are already getting in the direction of an overabundance of crit, da uh, crit damage. Being through the talent over here through running a crit damage piece so that's why fracture set is rather low and then we have the wisdom set wisdom set boosting her damage for 10 seconds after ult usage and as you can see the ult goes 15 seconds so we're missing out on five seconds damage for that ultimate and furthermore alora not only does damage in her ult but specifically when she's invisible with her basic attacks and those don't get boosted by the wisdom set which makes the wisdom set uh, less than ideal choice. 
Then on to stats. Stat wise, as you've already seen, we're running one crit damage piece, double attack bonus. Substat wise, we want to aim for at least attack bonus and crit rate on a crit damage piece. And then if you can, attack speed, rage region or attack flat. And on an attack percent piece, we do want to aim for crit rate and crit damage subsets, attack speed if you can manage, and then rage region and attack flat if it happens to appear on your gear. Now onto the last part for late game eat, which is going to be artifacts. Artifact wise, we again have the king or the best artifact for her, which is going to be Idris, Gaze, mainly. And now an Ancestral Teachings and Insignia of Perfection are still viable. But we have uh, two new competitors, which is going to be Nether Messenger and the Bloodborne Signet. Talking about Nether Messenger, Nether Messenger obviously being pretty much the best marksman artifact. But again, losing out because Alora is pretty much on her own. So you do want to preferably give her something that boosts her damage majorly without considering any Dolores buffs or any other buffs at all. And then we have the Bloodborne Signet, which just adds crit damage. And it's pretty much kind of the same reason as with the Fracture set of going into an overabundance of crit damage rather than attack slash defense ignore. So if you can, go for Idris Gaze, but all other options are still acceptable, which concludes late game Alora. Now on to end game Alora. Again, left to right. So, set wise, either Calamity, Annihilating Might, or the Warlord set. Whirlwind set is disqualified because we're mainly trying to get our attack speed from other sources, mainly being the substats, and we get a bit as the set effect for the Warlord set. So we are trying to get our attack speed from other sources, uh, sources and that diminishes the returns from a potential Whirlwind set, which is why it falls off. Substat wise, we do want to aim for attack bonus, crit rate, crit damage on both the weapon and the chest piece. If you can then on top get attack flat, attack speed or rage region, that obviously would be perfect. And even over here, you could hypothetically replace attack bonus with attack speed. So running attack speed, crit rate, crit damage as stats that would also still be fine. Now onto the right side. For the right side, we have three set choices. Choice number one, Infernal Raw. Choice number two, Atreus Wrath. And choice number three, Soulbond Arcana. Out of all those sets, the most potent and fastest effective set is definitely going to be Infernal Raw, especially because she does main the most of her damage in her base form and not as much damage when she actually uses her ultimate. And even with her ultimate, the interactions between her kit and Infernal Raw pretty much push it to the top, meaning Infernal Raw is the best choice. After that, we have Ageless Wrath. Ageless Wrath's effect is going to be a bit diminished, as again, because of her passive giving her already crit damage and us already running a crit damage piece. And then we have Sorbon Arcana. Sorbon Arcana, honestly, at the end of the day, isn't really a choice unless you want to use a Laura for a gate boss, which I wouldn't recommend, because you don't necessarily use her ult that often, actually, which is why you should. If you can, stick to Infernal Raw or Ageless Wrath. And now stat distribution wise, we are actually looking, even endgame wise, still at one attack bonus, one crit damage and one attack bonus piece. Combined with a must, must have of an Idrid's Gaze. If you do want to run this split, if you're running a Nether Messenger, you should probably run triple attack percent or... If you can guarantee that you're going to boost your Alora with the Dolores, then you can still run the Nether Messenger with an additional crit damage piece. And subset wise, we're looking for at least attack bonus, crit rate, crit damage, attack speed, those four stats on every single piece with then attack speed, uh, with then attack flat rage region being bonus. But you do want to aim for all those four stats once we're talking endgame builds. And like I already said, there is really no way around Idris Gaze, which already concludes late game Alora. And now on to Gear 8 3, 19, 20 and 21 Alora gameplay. All right. First Alora build showcase, which is going to be Gear 8 3 stage 19. For stage 19, a big disclaimer for all Gear 8 3 stages. I know it's sad and compared to Hudson and Alora actually needs Lunaria. 
you actually need either Lunaria or Araka to make Alora work for you. If you don't have a Pierce a lot, she's not going to perform. At least not on the right side. Probably not even on the middle side. So yeah, Pierce a lot. But that's not that's not the real point here. Let's get into the build. Pretty simple. So we have we have the standard armor. Attack bonus crit rate. As you can see, we are on we are on 88% crit rate. Obviously, adding in this talent, we are on 98%. We are full on attack, so three attack percent pieces. We have a bit of attack speed, as you can see, around 100, and barely any crit damage. And artifact-wise, we're running a non-upgraded insignia of perfection. If you happen to have an Idris gaze, do pick that one and then swap an attack percent piece for a crit damage one. Let's get straight into the stage. So start wise, obviously depending on who you're going to use in the middle, you have a little bit of a different start, but we're just going to use Silas and an Idril. And throughout this fight, um, I'm going to not trigger certain ultimates just because I don't want to instantly kill the boss, specifically Idril. My Idril at the moment is actually geared and I don't actually want her to just annihilate everything. So at this point, normally you would use your Idril and your Dolores to take care of those units over here. And even if she can't take care of this mob over here, as you can see, our Alora over here is already putting in the work, putting in the hours. At this point here, we would normally bring in Laura to refresh the rage. And now, now it's quite important that you actually wait for the boss to hit one of your units once. And then wait for the boss to target your units again. Because if you don't wait that long, the unit you place over here is actually going to die. Or, or get hit twice before you have enough cost to actually place down Elowin. Now we're not we're not really going to use a lot of ultimates, especially not Idris because she would just help out on the right side, falsifying our um, uh, our test, I guess. So yeah, as you can see, Alora is doing her work over there. Dealing pretty solid damage and our units can completely focus on the boss. We don't need to remove her. We don't need to do anything special. And now the three enemies come in and that's the point when you activate her ultimate. And with her split shot talent she is actually going to start dealing serious damage against those enemies over here. And as you can see pretty solid, pretty easy. She did take care of the right side for us just going to let it go through usually the last wave is a bit stronger than the first one so just to prove a point we're going to run run this till the end and then have Laura actually deal with the right side and yeah again important wise the pierce a lot because if you don't have a pierce a lot Laura doesn't reach she she's not She's not actually able to reach the enemies over here. So yeah, we're again using the ultimate, relying on the talent. The ultimate here is level 1. So especially if you can upgrade the ultimate, you definitely get a better result. And that's a clearance of 19. Alright, now on to stage 20 of Gear Raid 3. No power of dominance using Olora to single-handedly take care of the right side, easing our way of clearing this stage and let's get into the build as you can see the build is already pretty stacked we're dealing with a triple ancients of the infernal raw set and very very decent stats what do i mean with decent stats we have a weapon that happens to have attack bonus attack speed crit rate we have a chest speed the attack bonus crit rate crit damage we were running attack bonus main set crit damage and attack bonus and an artifact which would be an aegis gaze in this case on 22 or 25 and also for those requirements honestly the difficulty between 21 and uh, between 20 and 21 isn't that big of a jump but the jump between 19 and 20 is fairly huge you could probably go a bit down in requirements if you would actually get some skill level ups into her burst strike or get some skill level ups into the basic attacks we don't have that so this is what we're dealing with at the moment so yeah if you have heightened skill level we, you can do go down in gear requirements, but this is the stats we're dealing with, pretty much around 
around 280% attack bonus, 250 attack, 100% crit rate, 100 or a total of 300% crit damage and the rage region really doesn't matter. Let's get into the stage here. And what we're especially running is going to be a tanky Volker. You're going to see why. And obviously there's a couple of different ways to clear this. The main focus here is still going to be on Alora actually dealing with the right side. And we're going to open up with Sealers. Depending on what kind of way you approach to this stage. You obviously want to place down different units at different times. But especially utilizing Sealers. We want to place him first. Here we can already bring in our Alora, so she can start chipping off. Idris is uh, obviously going to help out there, even if your Idris doesn't kill there, then Alora can finish. And now we want to place on Laura. The important part with Laura here is you do want to keep her on the field until the boss shoots this attack over here. And then you want to remove her, because if you don't do that, uh, you're going to lose one of your units before you even have the chance to place on someone and now what we need to wait for is the second attack yeah this one the attack hits your unit and then you can place down your aoe unit if you don't do that you're not going to regenerate enough cost and this unit is going to get attacked twice and proceeds to die and here is it of importance to actually activate dolores or this bomber is just going to rush into your eagle and kill her As soon as you have the cost ready for your healer, you do want to place that one down. In this case, we're using Elowin and we're going to face her upwards so that she can actually heal this spot over here. This is later going to, this, going to be the spot where we do happen to place down Volker once we have the cost. And yeah, we're just going to activate the ultimates. As you can see, Alora is taking care of this minion on the side very, very well. We also don't really need to rush with Idrid's ultimate because Alora is doing the right side for us, which is why we can at this point already bring in our tank, in this case Volker, just to take some hits so our units don't die. Because those those exploders are pretty much the main source of problems for this fight over here. At this point we can activate Alora's ultimate to take care of the three dudes over there and bring in healing on Volker. Use our Dolores. Use our Laura. A Laura, not a Laura. <laughs> As you can see, she's doing quite the work over here. Obviously, there's a bit of RNG involved, depending on how many procs you get for your Idris Gaze. As you can see, the damage difference is humongous. She's dealing 14k on a hit with a non proc and 42k, pretty much three times the damage on a hit. That actually procs in Idris Gaze. Here's going to be a similar thing using Volker to tank. Just holding out and then having our units deal damage. Obviously, depending on the gear on your Sealers and Idris, the boss is going to die faster or die slower. Idris help helping over here is of no major importance, but especially once you've made it to this point. Idra helping is definitely going to be a big one. But we do have our Alora geared properly. So if your Alora doesn't quite meet the requirements, always keep in mind Idra can also shoot onto the right side and help out. Here we can again use our ultimate. And at this point it should be pretty much GG. My Nyx is a bit under geared, so depending on RNG she might lose, but everything went well. Alora took care of the right side properly and this would be successful completion of a gear rate 320. Alrighty, it is time for the final, the hardest, the most important gear rate stage in the entire game, gear rate 321, using Alora to take care of the right side. Disclaimer first with the Alora, the way she's built at the moment and with her skill ups, she's not alone able to take care of the right side but Idris is just helping out for the last bit but she's still the major contributor on the right side and probably because y'all are curious let's go over builds so we have a Silas over here Silas is running a warlord and infernal raw set stat wise as you can see 171 attack speed around 200% attack 
100% crit rate and close to 200% extra crit damage. <laughs> He's running double crit percent and an attack bonus roaring. Artifact wise we're running a bloodborne signet. Running a uh, nether messenger would be even better but we're just going to run a bloodborne signet. So if you have a nether messenger just use it on him. Alora. Alora. So. Alora pretty much has our best gear, I guess. She's running attack bonus, crit rate, crit damage on the weapon. Same goes for the armor and an added attack flat stat. Attacks, uh, stage stat split wise, she's running attack bonus, crit damage, attack bonus with the usual crit rate, crit damage, attack speed substats and then an extra attack flat stat and an extra rage region stat. Though this region, region set over here doesn't matter. Artifact wise Idris Gaze is at this stage, especially for trading one, uh, pretty much a must have. So do make sure to get yourselves an Idris Gaze if you want to clear 21. Nyx. Nyx is running pretty pretty much whatever gear. Keep in mind for me she's A3, so you might want to give her better gear. But uh, in general, yeah. No, Nyx is actually not that hard to build and uh, you should be able to test out for yourself if you can take care of the left side using your Nyx, this is pretty apparent. We're running a non-level sharpshooter's crest, skills aren't maxed out. We're, we're running just an attack speed set with some attack speed and then pretty much double attack percent and a crit damage piece. You can see the stats for yourself over here. Other notable heroes, uh, we have a standard Elowin that does run an invigoration set, though who that invigoration buff lands on isn't of major importance. We're running a Laurel. So Laurel also has an invigoration set, preferably the buff lands on an Idril, but if it doesn't, it's also nothing game breaking. Our Dolores is pretty standard, no set, high, uh, high attack, high, relatively high rage region, and then some attack speed, even though obviously that doesn't matter at all. Artifact wise, ancestry teachings, Volker. Volker is in full tank gear. My Volker is even only 5 stars, not even fully promoted, but she's running a triple HP percent life force set. Artifact wise, I just gave her whatever I had. And now on to Kuke. Uh, not Kuke, Elucas, Kuke's brother. He's pretty much just 2 star promoted for the range increase. His ultimate needs to be maxed out. And obviously the first promotion for the ultimate to be there. And I think we missed Idril. So, Idril. Idril is running a fracture set. Obviously the better set you have, the easier this fight is going to be. And the easier the boss is going to fall. So there's a lot of gearing freedom you have. Subset wise we have attack percent crit rate, attack percent crit rate. And then pretty much just attack bonus crit rate, crit damage and attack speed on all pieces. The fourth one being defensive stats that don't matter and the split is double crit damage and an attack bonus with obviously running a 25 Idris gaze. All right uh, now on to stage 321 the hardest most important stage to clear let's get it done obviously with different team comps you would have a different way of placing down units but especially for this video it's not going to be the focus on our team comp but the focus is going to lie on Alora's ability to help us out by taking care of the right side for us. Here we're just going to activate Sealer's ultimate. Bring in Alora. And as soon as Dolores ultimate reaches 95% we're going to make use of Idrit's A3. To take out the right side mob over here. And then work on this one, on this guy. We are a bit at the mercy of Idris Gaze. If Idris Gaze doesn't want to proc, we're fucked. If it does proc, we're good. As you can see, we're good. We need to wait for the boss to actually target Laurel. And before this projector over here hits Laurel, you do want to remove her so we don't lose the cost. We need to wait for one more hit. This hit is going to go against the Loris. And once that happens, you can bring down your AoE DPS, be it Nyx, Maul, Rezark. Whoever you so desire to use. We're going to activate Dolores ultimate to take care of this exploder. If we don't that guy is most likely going to blow up all our units. Alora can start working on this chunky boy over there. If you're using Elowin, 
do make sure to face her upwards so she can hear this tile over here. If you're using hollow or vortex, you can just face him to the right normally. We're going to activate Silas's ultimate, Nyx's ultimate, Idrid's ultimate. As you can see, Aurora pretty much already dealt with this guy over there, so he wouldn't be a problem even if now Idrid proceeds to shoot over. We can bring in our tank, in this case our tanky Volker, and activate our ultimate on Alora. And furthermore, activate the heal on Elowin just to make sure that Volker doesn't die, because if she dies we have a very big problem. We can bring in Laurel, take her out again to refresh some rage. Everyone survived, so everything's perfect. As you can see, the big guy is taken care of and we have one minion left. Depending on Idris' gaze procs, the outcomes may vary and also depending on your skill level. Obviously, if you skill up higher, you can, e and also if you add in some better gear, you can completely kill those enemies. But we're not going to do that here. We're again going to bring in some healing, activate our ultimates. And here's actually the time for Elucas to shine. Because Elucas is going to freeze this enemy, slowing him down, buying time for Idrid to then aim over, taking care of that enemy. Now we're just going to wait for the boss to pretty much die. We're going to use Laura here, just to boost some rage. Activate Elowin to make sure Volker survives all those explosions. Activate Nyx to the help take care of the left side. And our units are going to start hitting the boss. We can activate Silas ultimate if we want to. Boss is going to die. We can activate Idris ultimate. And we are now pretty much done. Now it's going to be a repeat of the earlier stuff. In this case again being Alora shooting the enemies and depending on the procs giving us a uh, procs of Idris case obviously giving us a different outcome. Here we even have Idra helping us out a bit. Again, one guy is left. He's going to get tagged. Depending on if your Idra is up or not. Either this guy dies or he doesn't. And even if your Idra isn't up, you can place down the Laurel Remover. And then also utilize Elucas to slow him down. But yeah, this is pretty much GG. 321 done using Laura for the right side. Yeah, uh, hope you appreciated this one. It took at least a bit to figure out the stat requirements. And yeah, um, stay tuned for the constants guide because this one is coming tomorrow.